everybody, my name is Jana Mantales and today we will tackle George Polya and his most famous contribution in modern mathematics. Born in Budapest, in what was pre-war Austria-Hungary or now modern-day Hungary, on December 13, 1887, he graduated in the Lauren University but chose to teach in ETH Zurich, Switzerland. Due to his Jewish roots, he, together with his family, moved out into the United States at the height of the Third Reich. He continued to teach mathematics in Stanford University before retiring and dying in the year 1985. George Polya was a prominent figure in the world of modern mathematics. He was responsible for the standardization of the teaching of mathematics to his fellow educators with what he calls the four-step method. First, he starts with understanding the problem. Essentially explaining the problem within your own words, it doesn't matter what language or how you formulate the sentences, as long as the, as the problem is stated correctly and the known information, the missing information, and the information needed to solve the problem is made clear. In reviewing the solution, you must check if the answer to the problem correlates with the facts of the problem. This can be done through double-checking your answer through utilizing the known and unknown information to correlate with the facts of the problem. For our first example, we will review the following problem. There are students that are attending a parade. One grade 1 student, two grade 2 students, three grade three students, and so on until grade 12. How many students are there in total? We begin with trying to understand the problem. This is by stating the terms. One grade one student, two grade two students, and three grade three students. The unknown terms are the population of the grades 4 to 12. The problem is searching for the number of the students attending the parade in total. Continuing forward, we will devise the following plan. Known terms are 1 grade 1, 2 grade 2, 3 grade 3. The rest are unknown. Based on the pattern of the numbers, we are assuming that the rest of the unknown terms are based on the corresponding grade level. So we will create a table and total the population till we find the answer. We shall carry out the plan. On the first column is the grade level. The second one on the right depicts the population of each grade level. In following the plan we devised, we shall add the sum of from all grade levels totaling to 78. Now, the checking on the solution, all we need to do is to reflect on the answer from the table and that is one example of how to use Polya's four-step problem solving. To explain this further and to make sure that you have already understood how Polya's four-step problem solving works, let's have another example. In this example, you work in a supermarket and your boss wants you to arrange oranges in a pyramid for a display. The pyramid's base should be a square with 36 oranges. We need to determine the number of layers in the pyramid and the total number of oranges needed. So we understood the problem as this. There are 36 oranges as a base of this pyramid and what we need to determine is the number of layers and the number of oranges in total in order to create this pyramid based on the known terms which is a base of 36 oranges. We will search for the unknown information needed to solve the problem with three steps. Starting with step number one, we need to calculate the number of layers using the square root of the base oranges. Step two, we use the formula for the sum of squares to find the total number of oranges. And lastly, we need to create a visual representation of the pyramid to ensure clarity. So now, we calculated the number of layers by calculating the square root of 36, which is 6. Then we used the formula for the sum of squares, which totaled to 91 oranges. 
We then will review the solution. By following the formulas, we have arrived at a total of 6 layers and 91 oranges in total. If we count the pyramid by doing 6 by 6, 5 by 5, 4 by 4, 3 by 3, and so on, we arrive at the same conclusion. So, in turn, the answers and solutions are correct. So, these are examples of how to use Polya's four-step problem solving. While simple in nature, it requires immense foresight and planning. And that's all for our discussion. Thank you for watching and remember to think critically and enjoy life.